Okay, so welcome to our uh, student screencast today. I'm Michelle, one of the POCUS fellows at the Hospital for Sick Children. Our topic today is POCUS for pediatric appendicitis. Um, and so this largely builds upon Mark Casaro's appendicitis screencast that we held a couple months ago, but it just incorporates a lot more case examples and we'll go a little bit more in depth around some key literature. I have no conflict of interest to disclose. And uh, our PEM POCUS rounds are now Royal College Section 1 activities, so you can get your credits by signing in. Our objectives today will be to go over how to perform pediatric appendicitis POCUS scans. We'll review lots of case examples of API versus no API. Uh, we'll discuss some key literature around appendicitis on point of care ultrasound. And lastly, we'll end with some pitfalls and pearls. So one focus for appendicitis is one of the applications that generates a lot of enthusiasm and there's lots of pros and cons to consider. It's one of the more difficult focus applications and the confidence can take, can take years to develop. Um, but the more that you scan children, um, maybe you can start with the ones with higher pretest probability earlier on, that will help you build that skill and confidence early on. So let's start with a brief review of how we actually perform the scan. Obviously, your area of interest will be in the right lower quadrant where the appendix usually lives. The transducer of choice in um, the API POCUS will be uh, the high frequency linear transducers. Since the appendix is usually quite superficial, um, the younger the children, um, the thinner they are, um, the better, the, the more, um, the higher resolution um, would be the transducer that you would want to use. Your anatomical landmarks in the right lower quadrant would be the psoas sitting um, right on top of the iliac crest and lateral to the iliac vessels. Almost looks like a filet mignon. So here is an example of um, normal um, scan. So the technique is that um, you really wanna make sure the patient has had adequate analgesia, that they're lying supine, um, you're using the high frequency linear probe over the area of maximal tenderness in the older kids that they can, um, if they can verbalize it, and the younger kids are usually um, starting with your landmarks in the right lower quadrant. And then you want to look both in the transverse and longitudinal planes throughout the entire abdomen. Um, and we typically apply this graded compression technique where um, we exert gentle pressure in the area of interest. And it's used to decrease the distance between the ultrasound probe and the pathology. And it also eliminates overlying bowel gas, which can cause artifacts. So you can see here at the beginning of the clip, it's less clear. And then as you're pushing a little bit more pressure, you can see the um, psoas coming into view on the left of the screen and your vessels on the right of the screen. In terms of the areas to cover, um, this is one potential technique and it's advocated by Civitz et al. in 2014. Um, we usually start in the right lower quadrant first to identify the landmarks, but it doesn't really matter where you start. The point is that you have to make sure you're truly interrogating the entire right lower quadrant, um, ideally in both transverse and longitudinal views to make sure that um, you don't miss um, atypical um, positions of the appendix, because really it can sit anywhere. So you really want to check for lateral to the cecum, you, uh, sorry, lateral to the, uh, to the psoas, um, and sometimes it can even sit in other quadrants of the abdomen. So when you're looking in the right lower quadrant, you would of course expect to see some large bowel and some small bowel. Here we have a clip demonstrating normal anatomy with small intestine on the right of the screen and large intestine on the left of the screen showing more air content. As we're sweeping the entire abdomen, we might see liver coming into view on the left-hand side there, and you can see large intestine just opposed to it um, to the right of the screen. Again, this is our landmark in the right lower quadrant with the psoas having that um, hyperechoic core that can sometimes be confused, can, that can be confusing for, is that inflammation? But really you can see it's um, very, um, very contained within the psoas. It's actually just the, the fibers within the psoas muscle. So this is a, a normal scan. 
Sometimes, if we're lucky, we can see the appendix draped on top of the iliac vessels, and the diagnosis um, can be quite obvious. Uh, we see here in longitudinal view with an outer wall um, appendiceal diameter of uh, more than six millimeters. So um, um, a way to remember it would be appendix, append six, six millimeters for um, abnormal if it's above six millimeters. Here we see the same um, appendicitis in transverse view. Again, you would want to measure um, the outer wall to outer wall diameter. So here are some features that might be suggestive of appendicitis, including this um, outer wall diameter measuring um, more than six millimeters. Um, but this is also an area of contention. You could have some um, normal appendices that are slightly above six millimeters, and you can also have abnormal appendices that are less than seven millimeters. So then these other features become more important, like um, is it compressible? Is there increased wall thickness? Is there um, echogenic inflammatory para-appendiceal uh, fat? Um, do you see appendicolith? Um, and do you see localized tenderness with graded compression? Increased wall thickening, um, what would be the measurement? I think they, um, some papers mentioned three millimeter, but I've also seen less than that. So um, I didn't include it uh, because there, I couldn't find like a consensus, but we can look into it more later. What makes it tricky is that the appendix can always, um, can't always be visualized because it can be sitting in literally any position. So here's one example of why we should be um, thorough in the areas that we scan. So here's an example of where you see the psoas on the right of the screen and then the inflamed appendix to the left of the screen. So even though we typically look for it draping over the iliac vessels, it's important to look on the other side of the psoas muscle. Pardon? Sure. So in this one, for the learners in the room, that's the appendix there. Another thing to consider is that you really want to follow the appendix to the tip, because as you can see on this image, on the left-hand side there, you may have a normal measurement of um, appendix that appears to be normal, but then as you get to the tip, as you can see on the right of the screen, um, it becomes um, more and more inflamed looking, and the tip, if you measure the tip, may actually um, Increase, uh, um, be more than the threshold of what you would consider appendicitis. So important to, to follow the, the blind loop to the, um, to the tip. When you cannot see the appendix, the secondary signs become very important and they can include any of the following, bright fat, mesenteric nodes, free fluid, ileus, fluid, collect, uh, fluid collections. Just to highlight an example, how would, you, how would you guys describe the finding in this clip? There's a thickened metric fat. The appendix, there's the ring of fire. Exactly. So um, Pezzo said that there is... Um, increased um, echogenicity in the, um, the fat, thickened mesenteric fat. Um, so it could be fat stranding. Um, we sometimes call it the ring of fire around, around the inflamed appendix. Here's another example of um, thickened, um, increased um, hypoechogenic uh, hyperechogenic mesenteric fat, um, and the appendix wall is thickened in this clip as well. Sometimes there could be so much fat stranding that it may be hard to visualize the appendix, but given how bright it is with the fat around, it would be enough to trigger you to say, this is an abnormal scan, I might want to get a comprehensive, I might want to involve my surgeons, um, putting it all together with the presentation of the patient. And here, what do you guys see? See an appendicular. Right. So there's um, again fat um, on the right of the screen. And then towards the end of the clip, there, um, it may be a bit hard to appreciate at the beginning, but you can see that there's. Um, a hyper echogenic um, 
round um, area there with clear shot with very clean shadow beyond it. So that's suggestive of an epidermis contained within an inflamed appendix, and that's suggestive of appendicitis.